Hi, I'm Doug Smith, and uh, welcome to a special edition of Portsmouth This Week. This is one of several special programs that document our visit to Portsmouth, England, to give greetings and thanks to the outgoing Lord Mayor, Lynn Stagg, who graced our town during our 375th celebration last year, and then to witness the making of the new Lord Mayor, uh, Stephen Wiley. Our visit was also concurrent with the 70th anniversary of D-Day celebrations in Portsmouth, uh, UK. In, in addition to the task of representing Portsmouth, Rhode Island, and indeed the United States at these events, we also took on the important project of evaluating places of social interaction in the southern UK, locally called pubs. We visited and evaluated over 25 such establishments. We hope you enjoy us sharing our experience with you in these special programs. Thank you. In June 2014, a group of Portsmouth, Rhode Island citizens represented the town on a mission to Portsmouth, England. Their primary mission was to present a resolution of greetings and cooperation from the citizens of the town. They paid their own way. No town funds were expended in the execution of their mission. Their mission involved three phases that included their official duty to give greetings and thanks to the Lord Mayor, Lynn Stagg, who graced our shores during our 375th celebration in 2013, and to witness the making of the new Lord Mayor, Stephen Wiley. They also represented the town and America during the 70th anniversary celebration of the D-Day landings. This episode documents our visits to English social establishments, otherwise known as pubs. The group was on an official mission. And we're just the U.S. pub survey team. Over here to, it actually gives us an excuse to go around and drink beer, nice. but, you know. Can I drink? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, you remember, right? I'll tell you right now. Brazil International Park. Arriving on Sunday morning, we had a few false starts in finding our first pub that was open, but finally we arrived in the small town of Havant, northwest of Portsmouth. Along the water, we visited the Royal Oak Inn. Our first pub on our visit didn't disappoint us as we walked along the seawall to the Royal Oak that sits on the shores of Bridge Lake on the Langstone Channel that empties into the English Channel. It was our storybook picture of an English pub with friends gathering by the bar and walking about the beautiful grounds behind the pub. There's a million people that love to talk to you about pubs and beer here. How long have you been coming to this pub? Uh, not that long, maybe 10 years. Ah, 10 years. I was asking a guy, I wanted to know, we're, we're here on a kind of a quest to find, we wanted to find the oldest pub in Portsmouth. We're, we're from Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Right. And we're, and we're sort of like, a, it's not exactly a sister city thing, but it's something like that. So we came over to find the oldest pub, and we think it's the Dolphin, but, but Jim, the guy that was, I think yeah. that's his name, was telling me that it was sep this place was founded in, seven it was opened as a pub in 1712. I, I, we're just right talking right to this gentleman who's been here only for 10 years. He's a rookie, okay? This, this young man here. Up there about all the pubs we went to. So we did. Yeah, yeah. international pub. Yeah, yeah. You guys know, all know so much about pubs around here. It's fantastic. <laughs> the Royal Oak in Havant turned out to be one of the best on our list of pubs that we visited. Lynn Stagg treated us to a lunch at one of our frequented places in Portsmouth on our 2013 visit called the Islamabad Kingdom Brunel, named for a wealthy English businessman.
On the next day of our trip, we again met up with Counselor Lee Mason and set off on foot toward the Portsmouth Guildhall. The Eights is a chain of pubs in the UK, but had a warm pub feel inside. The next stop was the Fleet Pub, with a good variety of brews and a nice outdoor seating area. After Lee picked up our van, we were off to Salisbury, about 70 kilometers to the northwest of Portsmouth. Of course, with such a long drive, we were compelled to stop for some refreshments at the Red Rover Pub in West Wellow. High on our list of the better pubs we visited, the Red Rover is nestled in a small hamlet with dwellings that have thatched roofs. We're trying to generate tourists here, everywhere, you know, from, from all different places. So. If you're going to Salisbury, you must go to the mill, which is... So how does somebody so young get to be the landlady of a pub like this? I'm amazing, really. I guess so. You must be, you must be amazing. Everyone loves me. <laughs> Hard work. A lot of hours. Long hours. <laughs> well, yeah. Are you having fun still? Yeah. That's good. I get to live here. Hey, great. I grew up around here, so Why not? I'm pretty happy. I've got the That's... new forest on my doorstep. An old mill in Salisbury has been converted into a quaint mall. Here we stopped at the mill pub. Yeah, I'm going to try the uh, golden, uh, gold, gold, no, wait, oh, one of your horse. We did get a rum ration, though, when the weather was bad. Yeah. Did they really do rum? Oh, absolutely. It, 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 the corpsman oh, kept it in it, locked in his safe. Yeah, and, uh, thank you. IPA? IPA. Here, not to be. <laughs> See, the trick is you take a knife, you cut the lemon. Okay, Gary, come on, the pressure's on. The slug and lettuce is part of a pub chain in the UK. It also has some great food. <laughs> Salisbury is where Doug suffered an inevitable wardrobe malfunction. I guess we had put a few miles on our feet when his shoe gave out. But in true Navy fashion, a quick repair was made and we were back on our way. The Royal Oak in Winchester is ostensibly the oldest pub in the UK, advertised as being established in 1002. These are ones? Yeah. Okay, so really? Those are ones? Yeah. One pound? Yeah. So it's, it's 1002. 1002. No, no, no. That's when the building was built. She's working at it. Have yeah. another pint there, Rich. Here's Here the 1002. 10 How much do I have? Five, Okay, this is the uh, part of the pub, the uh, the, the Royal, Royal Oak, Oak, Oak in, in Winchester, Winchester, which uh, they claim is the oldest pub in Great Britain. It was used to be in 1002. This part. Right? This part was apparently the pub. It's still got these old beam ceilings. There's some of the old wall here. Yeah, and some of the old wall. And this is just really, you know, really cool. This is where we learned about King Ethered the Unready, who gave the tenement to his wife Emma as a wedding gift. Unready is better characterized as ill-advised. When England was invaded by King Swen in 1013, reportedly, 
due to the bad advice of his advisors, Ethred had to flee to Normandy. Ethred returned to the throne in 1014. On our way back to Portsmouth, we wound our way down through the town of Burlston and along the River Hamble to the Jolly Sailor. We made our way down a stone staircase to find the pub on the waterfront. Tell Bob to pretend he see us, sees us. This is Doug Smith, another edition of Portsmouth This Week, the voice of Portsmouth Town Hall. Uh, this week we're in Portsmouth, England, uh, at the, the oldest pub. We've discovered the oldest pub in Portsmouth is the Dolphin, and we're here with our two favorite friends from the UK, and that's Lord Mayor Lynn Stagg and the Lady Mayor is my personal best friend over here, Ann Talbot. Walking the streets one afternoon, we stumbled upon a small pub in the South Sea section of town on Surrey Street called the Surrey Arms. In search of a few more pubs, we visited a pub called the Fat Fox and the White Swan and had a bite to eat at a pub called the Victoria and Albert. At the Victoria and Albert pub, we found some light fare for lunch and also a Boston Red Sox fan. Of course, in honor of our only elected official on our trip, we just had to make a stop at the Honest Politician. Outside the naval base, there's a street called The Hard, where we stopped at the George Hotel. This is where the proprietor made the claim to be the oldest pub but in Old Portsmouth. The ship in Castle had a good menu, so we stopped there for dinner. After dinner, most of our group opted to go back to the hotel, but Rich, Andrew, and Counselor Mason forged on. The ship Anson was the British equivalent of an American sports bar, and the World Cup soccer match was on the telly. It was much different than the traditional pubs that we had experienced. 
The Lady Hamilton had a theme surrounding the mistress of the legendary Lord Nelson. We ended our night at the Victory Pub. Linking up with counselors Hugh Mason, Matthew Whittington, and Darren Sanders, we returned to the hole in the wall that we frequented on our trip in 2013. Well, as you know, we met with Princess Anne today, yes. and she delegated, she delegated to me the power to present to you our Lou Meister, the Lou Master of the Porcelain Pub Survey Team, this traditional symbol of your title, of the Lou, of the Lou Master. The Order of the Lou Master. This is all the privileges there too. This is marvelous. Is this really? So, it's solid gold. when we want to aggravate you, you'll come over and pull your chain. <laughs> and, uh, and they were piped to ball because they went off the wrong down. <laughs> so, that's great. So, they were I, I, no one, no one batted it either, but it was like, oh, you're on the wrong back. But no one was like, what the hell are you doing? Rest of it. No, 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 great. So my, my granddad, of course, being ex Navy, and um, so it's just called Leopold Road after King Leopold, and the pub is named the Leopold after the road. And therefore, and therefore he ha has his face of Leopold, as, as is the common. We could be in campaign you know. Today is uh, Thursday, the 7th of June, 6th of June, 5th of June, excuse me. You've got it right. I got the week right, anyway, and uh, we're here at uh, one, of our, one of our favorite and uh, pubs and portions they were introduced to last year by Councillor Hugh Mason, who's on my right. Uh, well, the yes, thing is, is, is this in your ward? No, it is not in my ward. It's sufficiently close that uh, I've got Okay, so you don't lose any creds. <laughs> Okay. I don't lose the teetotaler vote here. <laughs> yeah, okay. But this is a this is a very traditional English pub. Uh, there are many bars which are would not be out of place in America, but um, this one is very traditionally English. Yeah. It serves local beer. It serves beer which is just straight from the barrel. Um, it just comes out under gravity, and um, it's good. It's opinion. very good beer. I, I agree with you there. I cannot fault the beer at all. Here we are. We're in, uh, in Portsmouth, uh, England. We're at the Hole in the Wall pub. Uh, here with uh, one of the uh, UK, the Portsmouth England councillors, Matthew. Um, First, I guess the first time we met you was here at this particular It was indeed, yeah, that's do you, right. Do you bring all of your um, international guests to this pub? Is this uh, the quintessential pub here in the, in the first stop? Well, well, obviously only the special ones from uh, from Port of Rhode Island because, uh, you know, we, we can't give all our secrets away to everyone. But no, no, it, it is... We are a sport for choice for pubs, like I said, uh, 12 months ago. Uh, but... This is one of the best, isn't it? Because it is such a traditional sure. English pub. A very neighborhood. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, we're here with the uh, with the landlord of the Hole in the Wall pub. How long have you owned the pub? We have been here for approximately 10 years now. We've actually owned the freehold for around about three years. Okay. How old is the Hole in the Wall? Do you have any idea as a, as a yeah, pub? The actual pub um, was, well, it was changed into a pub in 1998. Okay. So it's approximately 16 years old. Okay, that's not very old for Portsmouth not standards. Not really, no. Before yeah. that, it was um, wine bars, restaurants. And looking back at the history from 1860 to 1960, it was a corn merchant. So you could come and buy your corn. Obviously, feed your livestock, etc. Yeah. You know, so it was um, it was called Dittman and Malpass. So, how does one get into the pub business? Um, I mean, we all like a beer every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think I think for a lot of people, they don't realise when they go into it how much hard work. Oh no, I, everybody is. does. Believe yeah. me. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. I think I've, I've, I've always liked traditional pubs, and I've always liked. Um, the pub atmosphere, you know, the banter that you get in pubs, um, general people that you get in pubs. Um, and I was at a loose end and I thought, why not take a pub over? Yeah, great. Well, you liking it still? Still liking it. We're, uh, we're a multi-award winning pub. 
from our local camera branch. We got a, a, a um, I don't know how to describe it really. I, I think we saw it over there in the window. Yeah, yeah. it's called the Campaign for Real Ale, basically, yeah. which was set up in the early 1970s to to um, push forward uh, real ale, etc. Because back in the 70s, it was mostly going to lager and keg beers. Okay. And the Campaign for Real Ale saved it pushed it forward and we've won several awards from them recently as now, well. Now what, ex good. what exactly is real ale? What does that mean, real ale compared to what? I mean is um, it how it's made or? Yeah basically it's, it's, it's still conditioned in the cask, it's not served under pressure like your keg beers, okay. um, keg lagers etc, always served under pressure. Um, but real ales are still fermenting in the barrel, you're still getting all the goodness in there. Um, so that's, that, is, that is mainly the difference. Yeah, I have to, I have to say that the taste is great. We, we love it you know, uh, when we come over here. We have nothing exactly like this, although we, we are starting to develop microbreweries in the United States. They're becoming very popular. Yeah, yeah. well, there's, 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 there's a new thing um, that's happened recently, which has basically emanated from the States, and that was the um, craft, what they call craft beer. Yeah. Um, and a lot of American breweries, little small independent breweries, have set up brewing extremely hoppy beers. Um, and a lot of um, a lot of breweries over in this country have, have copied the Americans. Whereas I think it used to be how many breweries did you have in America? Five was it? Some yeah, the big major ones. Major big ones. Coors, uh, Budweiser, etc. Yeah, you're getting lots of ones. I mean, we've had um, recently we've had Scar Brewing from Colorado. We've had some of their beer in. We've had some from Philadelphia. Um, Victory Brewing Company. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, we've had a lot of American beers in recently, yeah. and they're all in keg as well because it's, it's it's easier to transport it. Well, you know the big thing people there, there's a misconception about British ales in the United States that it's warm because it's not refrigerated or not doesn't come from a uh, a high pressure tap and all the rest of it. That's totally wrong because it you bring, brings out the flavor, I think, very nicely of the different kinds. Yeah. The colder and a beer is, the less flavor you're going to have in it. Yeah. Yeah, the warmer it gets, the more flavor you're going to get. I mean, roughly it's around about 12 degrees centigrade that they say that you should serve real ale. Now, what do you have? The, you have the kegs down below, and they're, they're just pumped by pump, by, yeah, by yeah, pressure. Yeah, basically, yeah. So every time yeah. you're, you're pulling it through, so yeah, it's yeah. coming through. So. Well, great, John, if you ever get a chance to come over to our part of the, our Portsmouth, which is in Rhode Island, tiny place, please do it. Thank you very much for, no problem. Nice to meet you. for interviewing it. Thank you. Then we made our way to the King Street Tavern. Uh, Sam, well, yeah, this uh, we're, we're in your lovely establishment here. It's absolutely beautiful, outside and in. Mm. And uh, we just wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your bar, how long you've been here, how long the bar has been here, perhaps? Wow, well, the bar has been, it's been a pub since 1859, but the original footprint of the pub starts here. Okay, it's from there to here, or no, there back? Okay. Uh, before that, it was a house, so it was an original private re residence before that. But I've only been here a mere eight years. Eight years, okay. Up till nine years ago, it was called The Diamond and it had been called that all the way back. And I think, if I'm correct, it is the only pub that has ever been called The Diamond. Okay. But it, but it went through a bit of a rocky patch, and the chap that has got that place next door, he had it for a while and thought it'd be a good idea to change the name. Okay. So we'll still get lots of locals calling it The Diamond, and taxi drivers always call it The Diamond. So obviously there was a Navy link to that, The Diamond is a ship. Oh. Okay, that would be HMS Diamond then? Yep. Okay. Well, um. The King Street Tavern, you could you could have called it something sexier like, I don't know what, but... Mm. Well, that wasn't my choice, and I couldn't change it again. <laughs> that would get really confusing. That's right. You, yeah, no, yeah. you're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah, history is important. Uh, well, we think it's a, it's a great place. Mm. We were brought here by, by some local councillors here. You may know these guys. They probably hang out here all the time. I don't know. But uh, thank you very much. One of the important things I will say, 
that when I first took over, the first thing I did was take the widescreen TV off the wall. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations to you on that. Um, and it, yeah, even though we've got the World Cup coming up, they will not have a TV here. Yeah. So it's not well, good for you. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the way they should be. I'm very close to banning smartphones as well. Yeah. That's another story. Yeah. Well, yeah, our phones don't work over here, so it won't make any difference. Yeah. All right, thanks very much. Nice you, really great meeting you. Enjoy the bit. Thank you. Shenanigans was a friendly bar owned by a retired British sailor. We stopped at the downtown Portsmouth Slug and Lettuce and then at the Lord Palmerston's. The Florence Arms was an elegant pub on a quiet street corner. Linstag and Hugh Mason were gracious to drive us back to Heathrow, but we had to make one final pub stop. the Harvester pub in Ottershaw. Uh, I guess it's nearby, near Heathrow. Yes. And uh, we, 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 it's kind of completing the, our, our pub survey that we've been doing most of the week. We, uh, it was suggested that we stop by and hit one more <laughs> before we actually leave the country. But, uh, but, but let me take this opportunity to thank you two and the people of Portsmouth for being such gracious hosts. It was our pleasure. Yes, it's been lovely having you, actually. Yeah. Well, and it we like to reciprocate. It doesn't seem a year ago. That, well, it's not quite a year, but... Yeah, but um, it doesn't uh, seem a year ago. No. I mean, you could just pick up where we left off, which yeah. is, which yeah, is no, great. great. Yeah. Well, we hope if you get a chance, you come through Port Out and, and maybe drive through Portsmouth on the way to Newport or something. <laughs> Please stop in I, and let us know. I, for one, uh, if I'm... I for one, if I'm coming westwards, if I'm coming west of the Atlantic, I shall certainly come to Portsmouth, yeah. Rhode Island. Okay, well, that's great. Thank you very much, both of you. And so ended our difficult task as we experienced the joy of 26 pubs in the southern UK.